Welcome Bears fans to 2018 National Signing Day brought to you today by Ehrlich Toyota. We're here at the High Plains Club at Nottingham Field. This is the day that serves as the bridge for fans from football of last season to the excitement for the next season. My name's Aaron Rath. I'm the color commentator for the Bears on 1310 KFKA, and I'm also the voice of the women's basketball team here at UNC, and I'll be your host for tonight's festivities. Today, we introduce the newest Bears as they start their journeys to reach for the stars and pursue their dreams to play the game that we all love, let's face it, at the next level. Making a Division I football team is not an easy task. So these players that we're gonna introduce you to today are seeing their dreams turn into realities. Now is when the hard work begins. Coach and I talked about a lot of the hard work. Now is when that hard work begins for these players. While we look back at 2017 and we see a season that was filled with difficulties and, and injuries, we should look forward to a season that's gonna be filled with excitement and young talent as we introduce these players today. Some of that young talent we're gonna introduce you to today. 30 players, or 29 players, excuse me, 13 from Colorado, six from Texas. We have one from California, Kansas, Nebraska, and Mississippi each. We have two from Oklahoma, Florida, and Tennessee each. So we've got a wide of array of, of talent coming at us. As I welcome Coach Collins to the, uh, to the table here, I, I, I gotta ask you, Coach, I, I know the fans, Signing day is an exciting day because it's an opportunity to think about how great the Bears are going to be next season. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. We heard, of, we heard it as we were silencing cell phones about the time that these coaches spend. What goes into recruiting in this signing day? It's a year-round deal, man. It just comes to a point on today, which is that first Wednesday in February every year. But it, it always it starts today and it ends today, if you so to speak. So we finished signing our signing class. We're having a staff meeting about 1 o'clock. And uh, Coach Boyer goes, hey, Coach, I got 19 already for 2019 for you to look at. So wow. they're going to get into my queue, and I'll start looking at them already. So it's just a year-round process, but it's, it's, uh, it's a part of it because uh, the recruits are lifeblood of your program. And if you don't go out and get them, you can't survive. So you got to go out and replenish every year when you lose your guys. And this is a solid class of freshmen as we get into it, a couple JUCO transfers that we'll talk mm -hmm. about. So replenishing is a good thing, especially after a year where we had a lot of injuries and then a, a pretty significant amount of graduations. Yeah, this class is about size and speed. I mean, as, you, as we go through uh, the recruits, you'll see speed. If they're small, they can run. You know? And if they're big, they're, they're powerful. Um, and some of them are big and powerful and fast. And so uh, we just set out to get ourselves set up for the future uh, of Bears football because it's time to put us back on the track uh, into the playoffs and winning championships, and that's what we're trying to get to. So, Coach, you, you say playoffs and championships. Is that your expectations for the programs as a whole? And where do you want to see it next season? I mean, coming off a tough season, yeah. where do you want to go next year? <clears throat> I mean, I, I fully expect us to be in the playoffs and challenging for a Big Sky championship. I mean, this last year you saw two teams come out of nowhere, Southern Utah, and, I mean, Weber's been pretty good, but you see those two teams emerge, and, and – uh, we felt like we were on that, that cusp this year, you know, to emerge as one of the elite teams in the conference. And, um, you know, due to unfortunates that no one really cares about, you know, that's what happened to us. And so we're, we're, we're planning on this year, 2018, uh, to make our mark in the Big Sky Conference. So, Coach, I got to ask, is there like a secret website where you guys go to to find these players? How do you find players? How do they, how do they get on your doorstep, on your radar? It's, it's the work that these guys put into, man. I just kind of go after them and, and kind of, uh, you know, help out a little bit. But these guys put in the work we have. Coach Grable, our recruiting coordinator, does an outstanding job of getting us all the, the hardware we need, you know, for, um, to find out the recruits, get the first initial you know, tidbits of who we need to be going after. But it's about contacts. I mean, as you read off, um, all the places that we have guys from. It's, it's about where you're from, coaches that you know in this business. It's just six degrees of separation in the, in, the, in the coaching ranks, whether it's college or NFL or high school. And so you reach out to your contacts and you figure out, you know, who they're going to go on. Even, even our guys, you know, at the FBS level, you know, we get in contact with those guys and find out who they're recruiting because they have more resources than we do. Right. And so they'll let us know who they're recruiting and you go after some of them too because you know they ain't going to be able to take them all. And so that, that's kind of how it works. But uh, it's about getting out in, in the spring and we're traveling in the spring, whether it be in state, out of state, and just getting to the high school coaches and, and connecting. And so, um, and then the, the camps come involved as well. You know, Jeremy's done a good job with us, um, with our camps. And we went from one team, our first team camps, and now we're turning people away, you know. So um, it's a good deal for us. We, we take all kind of avenues when it comes down to recruiting. 
Okay. So a couple difficult, well, harder questions for you here. Uh, besides academics, what's that, what's that one character trait that you're looking for for a player to be a UNC Bear? That's not difficult. You look for hunger. You look for hunger. You, you want them to, to want to be, to be successful. You want them to come and want to succeed. We want those guys that have that chip on their shoulder to believe that they should have been at the FBS level. And some of them, it just depends on how you look at it or how you, you, you spin it to them in the sense of, you know, they want to go to FBS level. But we always tell them, come be the big fish in a small pond, if you will, instead of going and getting lost in the shuffle. And, and it takes you three, four, five years to get on the field when you know, we want you to believe. And, and most of them believe they can go in right away and play at wherever school they go to. And that's what you want. You want that chip on the shoulder. And so we look for that. We look for the hunger. We look for guys that want to work. Um, you know, I learned when I first got here, um, one of our most successful coaches in our, in our program was Lindsey. And, and uh, we, we met with, um, um, you know, one of her mentors. And he said, I don't, I don't really look at them if they don't have a job in high school. You know, so you look at those things because that's work ethic. You know, and so when they get to your school, you know they're going to work. They're not going to be there and expect anything to be handed to them. So we're looking for that hunger, that work ethic, all the things that we need from them to be successful on the football field. Okay. All right, Coach. So when you go into a, a house or your other coaches go into house, and yeah, I'm a parent, I have a yeah. teenager, and my question would be to you, why should my kid go to UNC? Because you're not going to find better people anywhere you go. I mean, we, I, I put our people up against anybody. We don't have all the, the bells and the whistles that you will, but as far as people goes, I, I put our people uh, from our administration all the way down to our janitors walking around the hallway up against anybody's people. And so, and that's what, you know, we, we talk about family a lot, you know, in our program. And that's really what it's about is, is the family atmosphere. And, and uh, you, you walk around our hallways, you see it. You see families up. You see the, the kids hanging out with us. You see the kids on the practice field, those things like that. So, um, and, and we don't have to fake that because it's, it's a real deal for us. And so um, I tell them all the time, just come and see it. And, and I promise you, you won't find a better group of people. All right, Coach, thinking about our returnees from last season, what was one of the biggest areas that you were recruiting hard in? I know we talked about size and speed a little bit yeah. ago, but position group-wise, where was where was the, a lot of attention paid for? You know, for us, really, we're trying to replenish every position group we have. I mean, if you look at this year, last year, this year's signing class, we have 18 offense, defense alignment. Same thing last year, just flip the numbers. Last year, we had five O-linemen and four D-linemen. This year, it was five D-linemen and four O-linemen. So we're always trying to because that's where the game is won, in the trenches. And, uh, you know, last year we lost a few before the even season started in the trenches on both sides of the ball. So we're not to make sure we replenish that. And then you look at Ellis and Deggs and Frank, and so he lost a lot of speed with AD and Cartagena. So we went out to replenish the speed of the team, and I think my coaches did a great job of that. And I think we're going to see that as we start yeah. going through these recruits here in a moment. Thanks, Coach. As I said, we're here for National Signing Day 2018. Today's event brought to you by Ehrlich Toyota. Let's take a look at some of the signees for this year. We're going to start on the offensive side of the ball. And we will start with Max Bruner out of Parker, Colorado, Ponderosa High School. Yeah, Bruner, he's a big boy. Um, like I said, if you, if you look at it, we either got speed or we got size. And uh, he's just punishing, man. You'll, you notice all four of these guys that they finish plays. And so most of the time they're dumping somebody or they're pancaking them, as the phrase is. And he's just one of those big boys, man, that likes to get after and he's pretty nasty as Trevor likes him to be. So we'll get him up here, man, and see what he can do. 6'3", 285 offensive lineman out of Ponderosa High School. He's a two-time Denver Post, all-Colorado team, all-state, two-time all-conference first team. There's a lot of accolades I could go down here. Solid player that the Bears bring in on the offensive line. No question. Next up, Ezekiel Kreps, an offensive lineman out of Thornton, Colorado, Skyview High School, a 6'5", 280 guy. You know, that young man's been coming to our camp for about four years now. And uh, when he first came to camp, he was 325 pounds. And he's completely transformed his body. And so it's the same thing with Zeke, man. He, he's, he's a powerful kid. And, and you know, he, he had offers at, at, Ohio, I mean, at uh, Oregon State. He went to Hawaii. Um, but he wanted to stay home and, and uh, play, with, you know, play close to his mom. And so that was an advantage for us that uh, we can get him in cusp. And plus, Coach Jones, our defensive coordinator, is kind of like a father figure to him because he grew up right across the street from Coach Jones as well. So Zeke is going to be uh, pretty special for us in the future. He's a two-time first-team All-Conference, first-team All-State, All-Colorado 3A. I like this. He's a Cadet Chief Master Sergeant for the Junior ROTC. Solid character player yeah. for the Bears. Yep. Yeah. Got some discipline with him. So looking forward to it, man. He, he's going to be pretty good for us. Next up is Kalen Keenan, an offensive lineman out of Bourne, Texas. Played at Bourne High School, 6'1", 270. This is one of the strongest kids we have in this recruiting class. And, and uh, he's not the tallest of guys, but he's really powerful. 
And uh, you can see the co confidence just oozes off of him when he was on our trip. So uh, we were blessed to get him. Um, he's going to be that guy that's controlling everybody up front. You know, he's, he's able to get under people. And, and, and like I said, as we call him pancaking and, and uh, controlling it all, and he can run, he can get out and, and uh, you know, knock people over. So he fits right into that, that mold of what, you know, Coach Wick is looking for when we're talking about offensive linemen. That was good timing, Coach, as you talk about his power. The, the highlights <laughs> up there is him driving his yeah. defensive lineman five yards back into the end zone. Uh, Keenan comes at us from Texas. He's a first-team All-State Padilla Pole, second-team APSE Class 4, 4A All-State, solid football player for the, for the UNC Bears. Next up, Casey Moreca, an offensive lineman out of Arlington, Texas. He played his high school ball at James Martin High School. Yeah, he's got some growing to do, but when you see this kid in person, you can just see the potential size, and he can run, he can bend. He don't play like he's 6'5", and I mean that when, I'm, when I say that, I mean like he's high. He's, a lot of guys that are tall as he is, they play real high, but this kid can bend. You'd think he was six foot two the way he bends, but he can get out and go and he can run, and he's an athlete. You know, he's, he's one of those old linemen that you, you bring him in, he's 260, and he'll be about 295 before he gets out of here when Jeff gets his hands on him. So you know, we're looking for big things out of this young man. And he's played for a team, he played tackle for a team that went three rounds deep in the Texas mm -hmm. State Tournament. I find it interesting. He likes all food but seafood. <laughs> so when we travel, we'll have to make sure we have other things other than seafood for yeah, him. No question. He, <laughs> he comes from an athletic family, and you can tell how tough the family is his sister was a wrestler in high school you know mm -hmm. so he's one of them I mean that, that family is pretty pretty tough and so uh, and uh, they both they're all you can tell they're gonna I mean he has a sister that's in the ninth grade she's six foot one I think already so wow um, it'll be pretty good for us yeah so next up Randy Clemens a tight end out of Quartz Hill California played his ball at Quartz Hill High School 6 2 245 the thing I like about this kid the most is that he plays defense as well mm -hmm. and he was all conference player on the defense side of the ball. So they use him in all kinds of ways. They use him as a fullback, they use him as a tight end, they split him out wide. And so the kid has great hands. And so he's going to be able to do uh, some things for us, you know, to be John's like foaming at the mouth to get him in our offense because he can use him at so many different spots on the football field. And, you know, he's a big kid and, and he's a nasty guy. Like I said, he was, whenever you get him and, and they're as good on offense, they're on defense. Um, you know you're going to get a, a pretty tough kid when you put him on that offensive side of the ball. Yeah, he helped lead his team to sectional and conference championships th his senior year. They finished third in the state his senior year. I find it interesting uh, that, you know, he, he was a three-time first-team all-conference member, and, and he, you know, his dad played offensive line mm -hmm. at Utah State, so he comes from the big bones. Yeah, and he, and he played old line his freshman year and sophomore year, I believe, in high school. So, you know, he has that, that want to to go block people and get after it. So when we, when we attach him to the line, he's like an extra offensive lineman in there as well. So here's one of those guys that we talk about when we talk about speed, and that's Matt Gadeck. He's a running back, six foot, 184 out of McKinney, Texas. Solid football player. He's more than solid. This cat, <laughs> this cat can run. I mean, when you, when you rush for 599 yards in one game, right. uh, you got some speed. And so it, it's kind of one of those deals, man, where in, uh, we got lights out. But that's good um, <laughs> to see the highlights better. Um, but he, he, can, he can run, man. I mean, the kid can split out and, and catch the ball. But he's powerful. I mean, he's, he's only 184 pounds, but he can flat out run the football. And that's what you want. I mean, people are comparing him to Rex Burkhead, you know, down there in that Texas area. So if he gets out and go, you're not going to catch him. And he was nominated for the Landry Award, which is the best North Texas football player. As you said, he had a single game rushing record of 599 yards, which is the most for any level of football in Texas football. Next up, we're going to go with another running back. Uh, Braxton George, 5'9", 171, out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Westmore High School is where he played his high school ball. Another speed, man. I mean, this kid, if, if he gets out and go, he's not as quite as big as, as Matt is, but you got to catch him first to get him down on the ground because if he gets out and go, you ain't going to catch him. So he's from Oklahoma. Uh, you know, Coach Woody did a great job of, of finding this young man, and, and we battled. You know, a few schools to get him, and they came on a trip, and they fell in love with Greeley and the parents, and, and again, our people. And so we are, we lost some speed, like I said, with AD and uh, and um, uh, Brandon Cartagena, but you know, Max and uh, I mean Matt and uh, and uh, Braxton George are going to be 
be pretty good for us. So one of them two dudes is going to have to play for us, if not both, this next year coming up. Well, as I look down his accolades on here, he could be the one holds the 6A Oklahoma City records for career rushing yards, career rushing touchdowns, yards in a single game, rushing TDs in a game with five, season rushing yards. He was the 2016 Central Oklahoma Offensive Running Back of the Year, 2016 and 17 Westmore Most Outstanding Player of the Year, so yeah. solid running back in yeah. the backfield for and the And he's Bears. pretty strong. The kid, I want to say the kid is, is you know, in, into the 300-pound benching in the sense of being a high school kid to be that strong. That's pretty special. So this is our running back page as we move on now to Gavin Green, a 5'7", 170-pound running back out of Fountain, Fort, or Fountain, Colorado, Fountain Fort Carson yep. is where he played his high school ball. Yeah, I mean, Gavin is just one of those guys, man, that you, it's, it's, we categorize him as athlete because you can split him out and put him out there, throw the ball to him in his slot. You can put the ball in his hand. You can run fly sweeps and things with him. So he's just kind of one of those, those, uh, those weapons for you, you know, those Swiss Army knife guys that you can put them wherever you want. Again, it's... If they're small, they got to be able to run or they can't play for us. And so he's one of those guys he can get out and go, and he's got some power to him. And, you know, his dad and I, we, he played fullback up here way back in the day when, when I was here way, way back when. We won't um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was, it was good to, to get Gavin up here. He's got a, again, he's got a chip on his shoulder because he didn't get the, uh, the recognition that he thought he should have got coming out of high school. So uh, we're excited about it. So he's the first player I've seen on here where it's listed as multiple sports. How much, how important is it for you for an athlete to be a multiple sport athlete? It is, I, you know, you hate for them just to single in on one because there's there's certain muscles that they got to use when they get to college that if they just single in, they're not getting the use that they need to get. And plus it's it has to do with the FBI, the football intelligence. So if we know they can play multiple sports and understand it and be great at it, that's gonna carry over to what we're trying to do with them. And he's a smart kid. He's a member of the National uh, Society for High School Scholars. So. So that talks to that yeah, academic we, piece. We've pushed the academics up a little bit, so you, you got to be on it if you want to come play for us. And I tell them all the time, if you don't want to come get your degree, you don't want to come play for me. So we're looking for young men uh, like that because we're trying to create great football players at the same time we want them to be great scholars as well. And that's a good characteristic. That's why I said, asked that question earlier where I said besides academics right. because I knew that was important <laughs> no to question. you. I wanted to go beyond that. Next up is Callaway Sosik. A running back out of Gretna, Nebraska, played his ball at Gretna High School, 5'11", 230 pounds. Yeah, it's another, um, it's another young man that plays on both sides of the ball. You'll see some clips on here of him playing fullback, knocking people over, and then he's going to flip over and go into the defensive side and, and go run people over from the linebacker spot. And so he's one of those guys that, again, played a fullback eight spot for us, and he's just mean and nasty, you know, you, and you want him like that in that spot because they got a pull and they got a trap and – they got to make those dirty plays in there, and then you can sneak them out the backfield and throw the ball to them as well. So, um, again, it's one of those utility players that uh, Coach Boyer and his staff, you know, can't wait to get their hands on uh, just because of his demeanor and what he's trying and what he likes to do. Well, and it speaks a lot to getting out and hitting people when his other sports that he plays are <laughs> wrestling and rugby. <laughs> right, no question. Right? He, so I'm sure you're going to yeah. have to tell him he has to put pads on before he can hit anybody <laughs> right. out there. He's a Merit Roll Award winner four years in a row and the 2017 Nebraska Linebacker of the Year. So there's the defensive side that you were talking about. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier the receivers that we lost and the speed. So now we get into some of those receivers. Keon Cross, a wide receiver, 5'9", 160, out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, played his ball at Rampart High School. Yep. He, again, played quarterback all year for him. He got out at wide out a little bit, but he's the best player on the team, the fastest player on the team. So they put the ball in his hands and just let him go. And he's, he's shifty as all get out. And like I said, we look at him to – take over in that, that Deggs, Ellisonic role in the sense that we can do a myriad of things with him. He's used to being in the backfield. You know he's smart because he runs the offense. And so he's going to have to play five different positions for us as far as receivers wise in the running back spot. And so uh, just get him out there and let him, let him do his thing. And he's first team all state selection for 4A in Colorado, two time league MVP. Uh, in his senior year, he had 1,171 yards and 11 touchdowns on the yeah. offensive side of the ball. Another kid that has ties to UNC. His mother and I went to school here. His mother went to school with my wife. His father played ball here. He was one of the great linebackers we had here uh, in the school. Went on and, and uh, I think played with the Cowboys for a little bit. But, and then his dad is also a D-line coach up at, at Air Force uh, Academy. So uh, Keon's going to do some good things for us. He's got to you know, get some, some, some weight on his bones and things like that. But... Um, he'd be a good, great young man to get up here, man, and, and let him get into our offense and learn it, and, and uh, he'll be pretty special for us. Next up, we have our first JUCO transfer, Sam Flowers, 5'11", 185, wide receiver, hails from Miami, Florida, but played at Ventura Junior College. Sam is a kid we're expecting to come in right now. Uh, he's already here on campus. 
Um, he's going to be a beast for us in the slot. He reminds me of Demetrius Stenfield, young man we had here a few years mm -hmm. ago. Sam runs great routes. And the thing I like about him the most, when he catches the ball, he gets north and south right now. And so uh, he's going to do some big things for us. He's been, like I said, he's been on campus. He's been out with us working at 6 o'clock in the morning. So um, he's getting <laughs> acclimated uh, to what's going on out here. And uh, I, I think his mom, she made, she's been wanting to, the ironic thing for us was to help us get him was his mom has always loved Colorado. She's never lived here before. But I think she's talking about moving out here because he's here. Has and she so, been here for the winter? She likes the snow. That's what she okay. wants to come be a part of. So um, we're looking forward to Sam. I think Sam will be, um, like I said, he's going to make up for some of those spots that we lost immediately. So Sam was Venture College Offensive Player of the Year last season, 2017 Regional Playoff Offensive Player of the Game, second team all-conference. Does he wear extra sweats when he's out there at 6 o'clock in the morning? No, nah, he's getting cold? used to it. He's, he's getting used to it. You can see him shaking a few <laughs> times in there, and he, he came out without some gloves on a couple times, and then he got smart and he went and got him some. So uh, he's getting acclimated to it. Most of them do. You know, we've had kids here from Florida. They get acclimated to it, and then they don't want to leave. So it's uh, – we're looking forward to Sam doing some big things for us. Next kid won't have to get acclimated. He's a wide receiver, 5'6", 139, from Lawrence, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Played at Lawrence High School, Dante Jackson. Yeah, Dante's another one of those kind of Keon Cross type guys. He played quarterback. He was the best player on Lawrence High School's team. And, and uh, obviously, you know, Dante's got to get uh, bigger. But you, you, can't, you can't coach speed. You can't coach, you know, that intelligent piece they already have. And like I said, he's playing quarterback. And again, he's one of those young men that he, he plays a lot bigger than he is because he believes he can run you over, even though he's a you know he's a buck fifty soaking wet you know when he's when he's soaking wet. But um, you know his dad is a former strength coach and his dad played in the NFL for four or five years and he played up at Wyoming, uh, Janae Jackson and then so um, I know what his pedigree is I know what he can get to because um, I think Janae was similar in high school like he was and so we're looking for Dante to come in. He got a forty inch vertical on top of that you know so the young man can jump out the gym. Um, and you can see it, you know, when he goes up and gets the ball, when they actually they can put him at the wide receiver spot. So uh, we're looking for Dante to come in. Like I said, it'll be – he's probably one of those young men that you want a red shirt um, just to get his body right. Like I said, let Jeff get a hold to him um, and, and, and get, him, get his body built up so he can handle the, the pressures of the big sky. He was 2017 first team all state selection, 2017 first team all conference, and he was selected to the Shrine Bowl. Awesome. Next up, wide receiver Jaron Mitchell out of Carrollton, Texas. Played high school ball at Hebron High School, 5'8", 190 wide receiver. Jaron Mitchell is probably one of the high school players that will come in and may be ready to go play for us right away because Jaron, is, his body is way developed. You know, he's about the same size height-wise maybe. He's a little taller uh, than Dante and Keon, but at the same time, this kid weighs 190 pounds. He's a 300-some pound bencher. He's a 400-pound squatter. He's a 285-pound hand cleaner, so, you know, at the wide receiver spot. Mm -hmm. And so, and Jaron can run. He'll run away from you. And, and, you know, we were blessed in the sense that he had already committed to BYU forever and ever and ever. And I don't know what happened. I didn't ask any questions. I really didn't care as long as there was no character issues. Um, and Coach Armour went and found him, and, and uh, we found him late. And uh, we went down and talked to him, and he came out on a visit and, and liked it. And so his mom came with him, and she liked it. So um, it's, it's an awesome get for us to get a caliber of young man because he has several FBS offers. Right. And once the decommitment came from BYU, we was able to get him. So he's a dual threat as a receiver and running back listed. That goes back to the speed that you were talking about earlier. Yep. District 5, 6A, unanimous first team all district selection last season, first team all district selection in 2016. He's already working for us because we thought we were going to lose the linebacker. Once the linebacker saw him sign, he came with him too. So oh, it's awesome. There you go. <laughs> that works. That works. Next up is. A wide receiver out of Lakewood, Noah Saria, 5'11", 185, played his high school ball at Clear Creek High School. Special kid, man. I mean, here's a young man that adversities hit him these last few years. He lost his mom. He lost his dad seven months ago. And you would not be able to tell it by the way the kid, uh, his personality is contagious. He is an awesome young man, and he can run. Um, he's put together pretty well as well. And so, I mean, he – you know, when you look at his body, he's another young man that you look at that may not have to red shirt type of things, but we, we try to red shirt him just so we can get him and, and keep him for a few years. But he's, he's pretty well put together, man, and he can do a myriad of things. You see him out at the wide receiver spot. You see him line up at the running back spot. And so uh, Noah will be pretty special in the program as well. And in our picture in our program here, he's got the biggest smile That's of all Noah. of them, and that goes to what you were saying. That's Noah. He's a three-sport athlete, first time – our first team 1A All-State team selection – Caught over 1,000 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns last season. So 
Uh, next up, Kaylor Werner, six foot one seventy five wide receiver, right here out of Greeley, played high school at Northridge yeah. High School. We we found out about Kaylor last year, man, when we were uh, you know recruiting Darren, and, and uh, we had Kaylor in camp, and KP is just a uh, he's just a go getter, man, and. and uh, Cape and I, you know, I found out about him. Tom Beck told me a little bit about him, and, and I trust Tom's opinion on, on, you know, when you're talking about recruiting. And KP, he'll just go get the ball, and he can run. And uh, you know, whenever you talk about a football player on a basketball court, and they said he plays like a football player, you want that guy, you know, because he plays basketball like he's a linebacker and bullying people over and things like that. But KP, and he's a baseball kid as well. So he's a dual sport athlete. You know, he's got some intelligence about us. And so we're looking at KP to come in and kind of be. That, that Stephen Miller type kid that we had a few years yep. ago, and KP will get some weight on him, and, and he runs great routes, so he can catch the ball. And so um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how KP develops you know, over the years here at UNC. And something that really jumped out, him, out to me on this paper was that he was the Northern Colorado Special Teams Player of the Year. Coach Cummings is probably uh, <laughs> extremely happy with that, right? <laughs> Anytime you got a kid like that, and he's the Special Teams Player of the Year, and he's a number one. Uh, offensive threat on their offense, but he's still playing special teams. You know the kid just loves football and he wants to go play. So that wraps up our offensive side of the ball on signing day 2018 here at Nottingham Field. This Today is brought to you by Ehrlich Toyota. The offensive players look to add some of that needed depth, yep. some, some really exciting players from what we've seen, yep. some speed, get outside, running backs, a couple solid offensive linemen there. But I'm excited to see what we've done on the defensive side. So let's let's get a let's get a jump into the defensive side of the ball and, and go from there. Defense struggled a little bit last year yeah. against the run. Couple holes that have to be yeah. filled based on graduations. So I'm excited to see what we have. Hezekiah Cotlong, 6'2", 298, defensive tackle out of Angleton, Texas. Played high school ball at Angleton High School. Yeah, Hezekiah's a big kid, man. And, and Hezekiah's another one of those kids that got a chip on his shoulder because he figures he should have went and played, you know, big time football. And like I told him, man, just. Come be the big fish in the small pond. And, and uh, we got three of them that are 290 plus, and we needed to get that. And you can see him, he's just throwing people out of his way and go get the ball. And so it's like a big piece of meat for Hezzy. He just <laughs> wants to go out to the ball and get it and, and eat up runners. So um, we're looking forward to having him. He's got a, another kid with a great personality. And, you know, Coach Jones will do a few things with his stance because they got him playing in what we call a bang stance, and he's doing a lot of line stunting. And so we'll get him going north and south when he gets here. So he's a new 2017 honorable mention Tapsy Class 5A All-State football team, second team, all-district selection. Last season, 98 tackles, three sacks, four caused fumbles, and a touchdown. So a big guy to stick on that yeah, all, on he's, defensive Yeah, he's a two-gapper. He can take on the double teams and clear up our linebackers to get to the ball, and, and then plus he can split them and go get the ball himself, and he has the power to handle it. So we're looking for Big Hezekiah to come do some things on our defense. Another big defensive lineman out there, Gene Desir, out of Miami, Florida, played at North Miami Beach High School, uh, 5'11", 247. Yeah, he, he may be the strongest kid uh, in the class, you know, as far as the defense side of the ball. Um, he's not very tall, but he can run, and, and he's strong. I mean, he's, he's probably 300 and, I don't know, 50-pound plus bench pressure in high school. And so he's one of those young men um, that's developed, and he, he may be able to come in uh, and step on the field right away again. If I had my choice, I'd redshirt them all. Um, but sometimes you got them, they come in, and they, they're ready to go. And so uh, you get them out on the field and let them go. So we'll kind of see how he adapts uh, to the size and speed uh, once he gets here. But Gene is just a go-getter. He's another kid with a great personality. He, he loves life, and he, he just wants to go make his people proud. You know, his, his mom and dad down there in, in Miami, and he just wants to make his people proud. And, and you can hear the smile on his face when you talk to him on the phone this morning when he sends his papers back. Well, he's got the mean face on in the picture here, <laughs> but uh, I can't wait to meet him. He's uh, had eight sacks, six tackle for losses, 30 tackles last season. I like the quote, and it really goes to what you were talking about. Physically, he is one of the toughest in South Florida. His conditioning has long been his trademark, Larry Bluestein, with that quote, and that's exactly to what you were speaking about. He just goes and gets it. Next up, Javante Garrett, a 6'6", 301 defensive lineman out of Memphis, Tennessee, played high school ball at Hillcrest High School. Yeah, man, I mean, when you, if you watch this kid's whole tape, you'll see this, line, this young man line up at defensive lineman. You'll see him line up at quarterback. You'll see him line up at <laughs> running back. You'll see him line up all over the place, and they just use him because he's athletic, he's powerful, he can run. Um, he's just a big old kid, man, that he, he likes to play ball, and he's down there in Memphis in a small school. So good for us that he kind of got hidden down there in a the small school. But, you know, between Coach Jones and, and Coach Armour, 
they, they found this young man and, and uh, Isaac Williams, who was here with us, found actually we got another one of his teammates as well um, that signed with us. But he's another one, man. He's so big, you, you don't know what's going to happen with him when he gets here, and you kind of judge that when he gets here. But um, when you can get a 6'6", 290-pound cat, um, three, I think he weighed in at 301 when he came on the trip. Um, he's going to be pretty special, be a, be a rock-solid place for us in that, that D-line in the future. I think it's funny that you said he played quarterback and running back, <laughs> and you didn't list him at a 6'6", 301 <laughs> athlete on our right. sheet, right? Right. That's really what he did. He helped lead his team to the best record in, since 1985 yeah. during his senior year. He was invited to the Tennessee East versus West All-Star Game. So he, yeah. small school, but he got the recognition in Tennessee that yeah. he deserved. Next up, a defensive tackle, <coughs> 6'2", 290, Brent Gilliland out of Sterling, Colorado, yeah. played uh, at Sterling High School. Yeah, he's already here. He's a young yep. man that transferred in from Wyoming. And again, we're looking for him to be an impact player right now. Um, again, he played both ways in high school, played offense and defense, went up to Wyoming and, and, and played, you know, on the D-line for them. And, and then we get him, we have one of his uh, teammates that we recruited, again, and they let us know, hey, he's talking about transferring, leaving. And so that was kind of the end for us there. And once he got his release, um, you know, Coach McGuire got on the phone with him and got him here. Like I said, he's already, I heard him walking down the hall today. He says he's lost a little weight because he's <laughs> 291. Uh, right now, but he looks pretty good, and I seen Coach Jones like, "Oh, don't you're, you're good. Don't don't try to lose any more weight." But he's trying to he's trying to get himself ready, you know, for what's going on in, in, in the Big Sky. Knowing we, they throw the ball all over the place, and so he wants to be ready for chasing down some QBs and things like that. But uh, he's a young man that is going to have to play for us this year. I'm sure Co Coach Butler's got him working hard in yeah. the weight room, going there. As you said, a transfer from Wyoming came in mid year, which is always a good thing because then they can get in for spring ball. Yeah. And he was first team All State selection his senior year. Next up, Joe Golden, a 6'5", 224 defensive lineman out of Colorado Springs, played his high school ball at Doherty. Yeah, Joe is, you know, Joe is interesting in the sense that Joe is just as good catching the ball as a tight end as he is playing defensive end. So, you know, the jury's still out as to what Joe is going to end up being for us. I mean, he's coming in to play defensive end for us, and if he excels at that, um, that's where we'll leave him. But if he can get on the field faster to tight end spot, we may uh, do some shuffling. But um, Joe wants to play. He just wants to get on the field and play ball. You know, he's 6'6". Six, six. He's a long kid. He's playing basketball right now, athletic kid. And, and uh, he's just hungry to play football. Again, that's another young man when I talked to him this morning. He's just excited. His folks are excited um, about him playing college football. And he's in the state of Colorado, so his parents get to come up and see him play ball. And his teammate that we have on our team already, Justin Luttrell, was elated. You know, that we get another uh, Doherty High School player to come play for us. Three sport athlete, as a matter of fact, football, mm -hmm. basketball, and he'll have track coming up as well. So that speaks again to that size and yeah. speed that, that we mentioned earlier. Second team all conference selection in basketball. So he's good at basketball. You have to make sure Coach Linder stays <laughs> away from him. Three time all conference selection in football, his sophomore, junior, and senior year. And honorable mention all state as a senior. So good defensive lineman. We'll, we'll see yep. where he fits into the scheme. Yep. Next up, Mason Knighton, 6'4, 247 defensive lineman out of Parker, Colorado, played at Ponderosa High School. Man, here's the kid, when you see him in person, you, you just, the sky's the limit as to how big this dude can get. Um, he, he's raw right now, but he is a big dude. Like the 247 doesn't do it justice where you see him to be able to grow. He can be a 290 pounder, 300 pounder in the blink of a hat, you know, once he gets up here. He's just a hungry young man. Um, you know, Coach Joan has to refine some things about him with technique, but um, he's been to camp here for us. I want to say, two or three years in a row. And uh, we got to take a good look at him. And we're able to get Mason committed uh, rather early to us. And uh, excuse me, Coach Cummins has been working on the young man. And, and uh, his family is excited for the be here. He's excited to be here. And so Mason's one of those guys that uh, it'll be interesting to see how big that young man gets. So he's a first team all state defensive lineman, academic honorable mention. There's the academics, the Channel 9 News, first team all state, Colorado Preps, honorable mention, all state, good defensive player for the Bears. Next up, Jalen Rogers, 6'3, 255 defensive lineman out of Memphis, Tennessee, played at Hillcrest High School. Yeah, he's a, the teammate of yep. uh, Garrett. And uh, again, we, we kind of saw both of them at the same time. And he's a smaller of the guy, but I mean, if you call 6'2, 250, 260, <laughs> small, but he's a smaller of the two. Um, but again, he, this young man don't turn 18 until September. Wow. And so you, you just you don't know, you know right. how he's going to develop, where he's going to be, because he's still got some growing to do. Um, but he's just hungry to play football. Great kid, 
Um, we heard more about him actually than we heard about Garrett, you know, but he's just, he's one of those young men that you want to have around your program because of his personality. He loves playing the game of football, and he's, he's one of them, them nasty ones inside that you know you're going to get a lot of work out of him uh, when it comes down to rushing the passer. And he's got some power. He throws the discus and the shot put in yeah. track and field. That speaks to his power. And he helped his high school team uh, into the third round of playoffs. First team all district 1A region 8 defensive player. So a good defensive lineman for the Bears. Next up, we have Emmanuel Adebayo, a linebacker, 6'2", 196, out of Louisville, Texas. Played at Louisville High School. Yeah, we, it came down to the last minute as to whether we were going to get this one or not. Um, when you see this dude in person, man, he is what you want a linebacker to look like. He is six foot two, two 200 pounds, and he can flat out fly. And it was, like I said, Jaron Mitchell was already working out for us because Jaron signed this morning, and AD saw it, and he was about to go to another school. And then when he saw that, he's like, no, nah, I'm going to UNC. They got some things going on over there. And so he's just a young man that you can put on the outside and just let him run people down. And so we're looking forward to seeing what uh, AD can do. And he's fast. He's an all-regional competitor in track, 10-9, 100, yep. and a 22.93, 200. Yep. If that was my time, it'd be 22 <laughs> minutes in the 200. But this kid's fast. He he's going to be good off the edge. Yeah, Multi-sport athlete, football and track. Yep. Second team, all district, 6A in football. So can't wait to see him coming off that edge. Yeah, you second team down in Texas, you're doing some things. There's a lot of people down there. Yeah, there's a lot of people <laughs> in Texas. When you can pull those type of second team and yeah. first team like we've seen coming out of Texas, yep. that speaks to the no quality question. of that player. Next up is Chris Ditzenberger, 6'1", 161, defensive back out of Centennial, Colorado, played at Cherry Creek High School. When you see this kid hit people on film, you would think he weighs more than 160 <laughs> pounds, but that's what got him. Uh, their, their MVP this year on that Cherry Creek High School football team who's a, uh, a plenty of powerhouse uh, in, in the state of Colorado. But this young man, he's, he's got the size. Uh, we get, you have to put some more weight on him. He's going to be pretty dangerous for us in that secondary. And he's got the, the height that we've been looking for at, at being 6'2". And so you know, we're excited to have him. Uh, you know, he played for a teammate of mine, uh, Tom Doherty, down there on defensive coordinator at Cherry Creek High School. And, and Tom, he's a coach. He just came out of nowhere this year. And so uh, we're looking forward to – you know, getting the weight on on Chris and, uh, you know, Woody will get his hands on him, make him a pretty good player, and he has no regard for his body. He just wants to hit people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell that looking at his yeah. uh, looking at his highlights there. Two, 2017 first team all-conference, Cherry Creek defensive MVP, as you said. Uh, Cherry Creek most improved first team all-conference. So yeah. that speaks to the coming out of nowhere for this for this defensive back. Mm -hmm. Next up, another Colorado kid, Aaron Harris, six foot 185 defensive back out of Centennial, Colorado, played at Grandview High School. Yeah, this kid has a lot of power in his body, man. He can run. Um, he's also going to long jump here for us. He's a 22-10 long jumper in high school. He came, I think he said he came in third last year. He's looking to come in first this year. And he's another one of those young men that can jump out to gym. I think Aaron's vertical is in that 39, 40 range as well. Um, but the thing I like about him, he's a, he's a real mature kid. He knows what he wants to do. He knows how he wants to do it. He had a track. He actually had a full scholarship to go to, to Air Force, um, but he wanted to play football um, and, and, and uh, participate in track as well. And anytime we can get a track athlete um, up here to, to help out you know, uh, on, our, on our track team, we're going to do that. And so we're, we're lucky to have Aaron on our squad. And anytime you can get someone that got a scholarship to Air Force, that speaks yeah. to their academics no and question. their character, and that's no the question. type of player that you want exactly. on your team. 2017 Mount Massive second team all-league selection. 2016 Mount Massive first team all-league honoree. Almost done. Five players with 29 <laughs> on our sheet. Yeah. Solid big class today. 5'11", 167, defensive back Greg Lede out of Port Arthur, Texas played at Port Arthur Memorial High School. I just like the way this kid plays football, man. He, he's, a, he's a DB out there, man. He's always on top. He's always in position. And he just, he's a ball hawk. He, you're not going to complete many balls on him. I think he had something like 20 deflections. And I think in two years, it was 40 deflections and, and four or five picks or whatever it is. But he's one of those young men that I just, we just got to refine him a little bit um, because he, he's already got the understanding. He has the attitude, uh, the cocky confidence, if you will, um, from playing DB. And I'm looking forward to this kid, man. He's going to have a bright, bright future uh, when it comes down to playing DB here at UNC. You do good at remembering stats, Coach, when uh, 
you can maybe come up and do some stats for us. <laughs> he, uh, you're right, he had four interceptions, 20 pass breakups in his yeah. senior season, 40 overall in two seasons played. He was part of the 2017 5A first team, all district team in Texas, yeah. an all district team speaks to his quality. Next up, Santos Maguina, 5'9", 172, defensive back out of Arvada, Colorado, played at Pomona High School. Yeah, Santos, another one of them young men. We had him in camp, offered him in camp. And, and Santos was a dual guy for the, I mean, for the state championship team uh, this year. He played wide out, he played DB, and he's been to camp a couple, two, three years, and his family is awesome. And, and Santos is just one of these young men that, you know, whether he plays corner, whether he plays safety for us, it'll all depend on how it shakes out for him. But Santos is one of those great, those great kids. He's got a good skill set, got good hands, good feet, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, Santos, you know, making his own mark at UNC. Second team all-conference selection. He, as you said, he's two-sport lettering in both baseball and football at Pomona. So, so a solid two-sport player, so you're going to have to keep him away from the baseball field over there. <laughs> Plus, he brings championship pedigree. You want to get that in your, your program as well. When you, you, know, you win state championship in, in Colorado with the schools that we have here that have been traditional powers, and they come up and get one. Uh, Coach Miller's done a great job with those guys down there, and so we're looking to get that, that championship pedigree in our program. Yeah, we like that championship pedigree. No question. Next up, Chris Pope, 5'10", 166 defensive back out of Edmond, Oklahoma, played at Edmond Memorial High School. Speed. Uh, this kid can just flat out run. You know, he was averaging 46 or 36 yards per kickoff return last year, you know, when he, when he gets the ball on his hand, in his hands. And so, again, you want to get that speed into your program. Um, you know, he's not the biggest. He's 160-something pounds, but – He's going to be pretty good, and he's a tough kid. You know, he's a tough guy, and he's just hungry. You know, he has some opportunities. He, we thought we were going to lose him to the San Diego State of the world, and, and I think he had a, a look at Wyoming. But uh, we were able to get the young man in our program, and, and uh, you know, we're going to do some great things. He's probably going to show up on special teams for us first and then, you know, work his way into contention in the secondary. Yeah, so a couple holes on the special teams with yep. – with the two big guys leaving, Deggs and Onik, yeah. in big shoes to fill. Yeah. Maybe he's the guy that, that the other teams in the Big Sky Conference kick away from in a season or two, right? <laughs> I'm hoping they stop <laughs> kicking away so we can get the yardage we need. But. I agree, I agree. That's what we talk about all the time, yeah. Troy and I. Kick returner, 678 return yards last season. Next up, a 5'10", 185 defensive back out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, Cheyenne Mountain High School, Shamari Rivera. Yeah, this one of these athletes, man. You, you, you get on your radar. He moved in uh, to the Springs in that area um, last year, and, and the coach called us on him. And uh, you take a look at him. He came up to a couple games, and you start watching this film, and you're just like, we can find somewhere for this young man to play for us. So he'll probably start in the secondary. But again, this is about the speed. You want to get you, – you can't coach speed. You can't coach height. And so you can, you can get them bigger. You can get them stronger, but you can't coach speed. You can't coach height. And so when you can get the speed into your program, uh, you're going to take every chance you can to get it in there and, and uh, let, let the position work itself out where he's going to end up. In high school, he was a two-way player, played wide receiver, running back, and defensive back. Yeah. Two-time all-league selection as an athlete, team captain his senior year, and academic all-state honorable mention. And rounding out the class, the last transfer as well, mm -hmm. Paul Wilson Jr., 5'7", 162, defensive back out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, played juco ball at Capaya Lincoln Junior College. Yeah, Paul would be mad if you call him 5'7", but he ain't much taller than that. But he's got, a, <laughs> he's got this small man's disease, you know, that Napoleon disease. He, he, he plays a lot bigger than he is, and he's kind of similar to Isaiah Swopes that we took last mm -hmm. year. Um, but he's one of those guys, man, he's going to pack a punch in that small body and he can cover and he likes to hit people. And so um, Paul will be one of those. We, we lost a couple of DBs, um, you know, last year. So Paul will come in and, and uh, you know, help us fill those holes until we get these young ones ready. Um, but Paul has two years to play for us and we're looking for some big things out of Paul. First team all uh, NJCAA, played nine games last year, accumulated 31 tackles, two sacks, two interceptions, and All-American honorable mention. So he's going to come in and, and be, be an important part of yeah, this I mean, defense. And the sacks speak to, you know, when you have a young man that, that is his size and you send him, he's getting sacks, you know he's tough. He'll go in, through the, in there with the trenches and make sacks and things like that. And so Paul will be pretty good for us. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for – Introducing us to the new Bears, I got to ask, how would you sum up this class overall? And what excites you about this class? Like I said, what excites me about this class, man, is we got size and we got speed. And those two things that, like I said, you can't coach, you can't teach. And so we're looking forward to getting that size and speed on, on, on the field. Um, but it's just a continuation of what we've done. It's, it's kind of ironic that 
the first class we had as a whole that we felt really good about is our senior class right mm -hmm. now with the Nips and the Trays and the mm -hmm. Alex Wesleys of the world. And so we've just gotten better and better every year. And the last class we had 2017 was pretty salty. So we'll know <laughs> once they get here how good they're going to be. So were there any areas of the team that you didn't get to address as much as you would have hoped to? No, I mean, I think we pretty much did a good job and hit, you know, hit all the areas you wanted to hit. Obviously, you like to get more of every position, but mm -hmm. NCAA allows us to have so right. many in, at one year's time. So, um, again, you never really know what that class is going to pan out to be until you get them on the field. And so um, it'll be interesting with the bridge program that we have. We get them here this summer. Um, they're all anxious. They already, they already know the date, June 18th. They've said it to me <laughs> talking to them. Coach, I'll see you June 18th. And so um, we're looking forward to getting them up and just kind of seeing how they fit in, where they fit in, what the personality is like. And if we can get them better than what we had in 2017, we got a future on our hands. All right, Coach, thanks for sharing about this class. I'd like to now open up to the floor if there's any questions from anybody out there that for Coach. Mm -hmm. used to that. Is there a lot of film study that goes into that on the uh, other side, not just football, but you're looking at a lot of what they do in their other sports, or is that more where you're, you're talking to their coaches? No, that's just how that, that's how that's how it used to be. You know, you 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 got. I mean, just in our own state, you got folks like Dave Logan that he got drafted in baseball, football, and basketball. And so you get athletes like that, you know they have the mental capacity to handle it. You know they have the toughness to handle from going one season to the next to the next. And so you want to get young men in your program like that that, that have that capacity. So if, if you, you get them, like we have a lot of athletes on our, on our board, you know, and so you get them up here and they can get on the field faster over there than they can there, you know you can just flip them and use them in other ways. And so you always want to get those multi-sport guys. And, you know, this the generation is coming to more of, you know, they want to settle down and concentrate on one sport, but what happens if that sport don't work out? you got to have the next one to go to. And so um, we, we look for that because you want them to be able to come in and do multiple things for you. Thanks, Peggy. Bill, next. Uh, we talked about a little bit about a rough year last year. Mm -hmm. The changes that need to happen, of course, start with your recruits coming in. Is it a change in schematics or is it a change kind of in a mindset saying, okay, this wasn't Barrett's football last yeah. year? How do we get back to that? Well, the first change is keep them healthy. <laughs> That'll be the first change. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll do some things to adjust that as well. But the second thing for me, the, the, the most important thing for me and, our, and my staff is to make sure that our guys that are quote unquote backups understand you got one play and you can be the starter. And so you want to get that mindset on these guys and you want to get it to where your, your squad is mature enough that you can play multiple guys. So they all view themselves as being a starter. And that's where myself has to make sure that our players understand, man, don't look at yourself as being a backup. You have to prepare like you are the starter. I mean, you, you take this season, the two national, mm -hmm. the, the Super Bowl champion was a backup, but he was ready. When his number was called, he was ready to go. The, the Super Bowl, I mean, the, the college B FBS championship, the kid didn't play really all year, but he comes in the halftime of a game and he's ready to go and he goes out and wins the game. And so that's the mindset we have to get our kids into. And those are great, two great examples for us to drive it home with our young men that you have to prepare like you are the starter because you're one play away from being that guy. Aaron Harris is the guy that I just kind of jumps off mm -hmm. the chart for me because I like that going to the next level play in a couple of sports. There's kind of two rules of thought there. Maybe there's coaches that maybe want focus to be football all the time. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know that he's, uh, he's going to be focused on sports all year round because right. he's two sports. Is there a side of you that kind of wonders if it's – too much into one sport rather than uh, just football, or is, is that more of a luxury? That it is? No, I mean, it, it's twofold for me. Again, um, they got to be mature enough to handle it. And I'll be honest with you, the, the one we have that we've we done it with first was Alex Wesley. He won, our, he won our conference championship as a freshman, running a 47 flat, you know, uh, 400. Then he followed it up the next year with a 46-2. But any time for us, I know that our men's track team don't have the budget and the scholarships that they need to fund a full – you know, college track team. So anytime we can help out with that, yeah. I have no problem um, helping Amanda out and getting some guys that want to come and run and want to be successful as on the field because it, it, it brings a little bit to it. You know, Alex can talk to our guys about how it feels to be a champion. And again, you want to, you know, you want to uh, infuse your squad with championship mentality. And so he's bringing that individual championship mentality to a team setting. It's going to help us out. And, and hopefully Aaron can do the same thing coming in. Like I said, it's just not like, we said, okay, he can run. Aaron had a full scholarship to go run track at FBS level like Alex did. 
but we gave him the opportunity to do both. And, and, and Coach Boyd did a great job of recruiting him and selling him on it. And so um, we got him to come on and play both sports for us. And so we're looking forward to seeing if Aaron can come in and, and uh, you know, follow odds, you know, in, in, uh, in the championship realm. But uh, we've already talked to him a little bit about the maturity level that it takes to be a two-sport athlete in college because it's, it's kind of tough. Coach, I've got a quick question. Yes, sir. How many guys out of this class realistically do you think will be significant this coming season? Um, outside of the three JC transfers that we already have or, or, or university transfers that we already have, I, I would say two, maybe three. Okay. Um, you know, it, it depends on how Randy Clement comes in and learns our offense, whether he can help us, you know, right away in that H tight end fullback role that Coach Boyer wants to use him in. And then you're talking about Jerry Mitchell, who is dynamic receiver, uh, and we lost three really good yeah. ones. And so Jerry Mitchell may be able to come in and help us. And one of those three running backs, um, cause we're a three-back system. We kind of get them rotated sure. in there and out of there to keep them healthy. And so either Braxton George or Matt Gaddick, one of them two dudes, may have to help us out next year. So those are the three. But again, you never really know because when you look at um, Brandon Biggs three years ago, Brandon Biggs, when we saw him this time of year, he was 215 pounds. He looked sick. He was diabetic and this, is that, and the other. And then Brandon showed up 235 pounds and he played for us as a true freshman. So you just never know until you get him here as to what they're going to do when, when they get here. So a good question. So if I had my druggers, I'd redshirt them all. Sure. Um, and, so they can, and so they can be stronger and faster, but sometimes you just can't afford to do that because they're that good when they get here. Yeah. Yeah. Time for one more question. I want to go yes, sir. Um, football's a rough game. Andrews is a part of the game. Mm -hmm. Maybe a question for Coach Butler. But what can uh, UNC do, or what do y'all do, to try to prevent or mitigate the number of injuries that you have? I mean, part of it is, I mean, you know, people talk about football as being a contact sport, but it's not a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. <laughs> You're colliding in each other at 22 miles an hour, you, you're hitting people. And so it's one of those deals where injuries are a part of the game. Um, you know, but what the NCAA is doing and, and what we try to do too is just cut back on the day-to-day -day contact that you have with them. Just try to keep them healthy. Um, you know, and also it, it's about, you know, squad size. You know, it's about the squad size and the many guys you can, you can get on your squad and stay healthy on the squad. And you can, you don't have, they don't have to practice many plays um, with lower squad numbers. And so. All those things that we're working on and, and trying to not repeat what happened to us last year. I've been doing this for going on my 24th year, and I've never, ever seen it like that before where you lose 20 guys in the season, whether it be one game or the whole season. So um, hopefully Lord say the same. We don't have to deal with that anymore as far as that many guys getting injured. I mean, you're going to get injured. That's part of the game, but you just don't want to have that many. So, Coach, my question is kind of a follow-up, a kind of great segue. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll get you a drink later. Um, football's turned into that year-round sport. What, what are the football players doing now? Uh, you know, we've been going at it. We had a meeting on January the 7th. The school started January the 8th, and we were out um, either on the field in the weight room at 8.30 that next day working. And Coach Butler's doing a great job with him, and he's instituted something called morning gym. So Tuesdays and Fridays, they're out there at 6 o'clock, you know, whether it's 15 degrees, whether it's 40 degrees, they're out there. I think one day it was almost below, but the kids out there bundled up and they're getting it in. And because and, uh, we hope to be playing in that weather, you know, right. come, you know, this time next year, December and, and January. And so um, he's doing a great job getting those guys ready. And we kind of split them up in the teams creating competition. And so there's all kind of things we have going with them and whether it's, we call it Bears supporting Bears, whether we're going to basketball games or wrestling matches or whatever it is, they're trying to support. And we, you know, got points going. Like I said, we're always trying to compete all year round. You don't have a game to look forward to on Saturday. So you have to manufacture competitions with them. And I think it's going pretty well um, with the eight teams. And we'll kind of see uh, who comes out on top with that competition. When does spring practice start? Uh, we start spring practice that Tuesday after spring break. So I want to say it's March the 20th or March 21st. I think it's the 20th this year. And we go Tuesday. Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday and Thursday practice are 7 in the morning. Again, we get them out there and get the practice on and over with, and then they have the rest of the day to do what they want to do. Um, and then on Saturdays, I think uh, most of our practices are somewhere right around 9 o'clock. And those are open? People can come and sit on the hill and watch yeah, them? Yeah, I don't have time to be trying to keep people out. So um, <laughs> it's, football is a bunch of pleasurism anyway, so you can't have any secrets. So anybody can come out and, and watch us and hang out. Just don't get too close. My insurance don't cover them. Right. So, <laughs> Coach, 
Now on to next season. Mm-hmm. It's a challenging schedule. Schedule that has four playoff teams from last season. Two teams that really have the argument that they yeah. should have been in with right. Eastern Washington and McNeese. Yep. Um, what What is your thought on that schedule? No FBS schools, yep. no Division II schools. It's straight FCS and a lot of tough teams out there. You know, it's funny you bring that up because I had somebody at the basketball game tell me the other day, Coach, your, your schedule's not as tough this year. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but they're looking at there's no FBS. Florida and Colorado. But at the same time, when you talk about four playoff teams, you know, in your conference, your, your three non-conference games are all playoff teams or should have been playoff teams. Um, it's a pretty tough schedule for us, but we're looking forward to it. Our, our guys literally are chomping at the bit, and I think it started the last game of the season. It didn't start when we got back June, January the 7th, and, and our guys just made a commitment to each other that last game that we're not going to go out on this losing streak. And it was kind of perplexing to me because we came out and played <laughs> like I wanted them to play all year at our weakest point in the season. But you come out and you go 42 nothing with – you know, a team that's traditionally really hard to defend. Um, our guys are looking forward to it, and they're really chomping at the bit um, to get to that schedule. And we, we kind of set it up like that because, again, this class was the first class we knew that we had that was going to mm-hmm. be pretty solid. And so we set it up like that just to play like opponents so we can make a push uh, to get to challenge in the Big Sky Championship and, and move on into the playoffs and hopefully be playing in December and January. So it's one of those schedules that is a tough schedule, but it's it's a good one, right? There's no back-to-back road games. There's a back-to-back home game, but no back-to-back road games in the mix. And I know that road games wear on people. They make you tired. So I know spouses everywhere for coaches, my spouse included, are happy that there are no back-to-back road games. Well, you, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I don't look at the schedule that deep. I just know the first three games, and after that, I couldn't tell you what we got. But, um, you know, that that's, that's pretty unique that you don't have a back-to-back. Um, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, once you get there, you get there early enough to get your body recovered from the travel. You walk out on the field, and no matter whether you're home or on the road, you just got to go win. And, and that's something we got to get better as well as getting on the road and winning football games on the road. So um, I'm really excited uh, about this season. This is the first time that I didn't need the break to be ready for spring ball. We could have started spring practice a week after the season was over. So I'm looking forward to it and uh, can't wait for March to get here. All right, thanks, Coach. My pleasure. I want to thank Bears fans for joining us and and Coach Collins here for this, what I think is an exciting class of the National Signing Day event today brought to you by Ehrlich Toyota. Coach, thanks for helping the Bears fans get excited for next season. It's going to be a fun season. Some dates to remember coming up. Uh, As you mentioned, spring ball starts in March. We'll have the spring game on April 21st right out here on UNC grounds. So it's a great opportunity for people to come out and check out the Bears and and pack the stands and and cheer those guys on. And it kind of gets them going for the summer and into the next season. Yeah, that's, that's a day of events. You know, we have the women's yep. walk beforehand and we might have a softball game. We might have another, I don't know, we use it, the volleyball event or something mm-hmm. like that going on that time of the year as well. So it's a day of events from, you know, top to bottom. So come on out and check out the Bears. Yep. So you can follow the Bears on Twitter at UNC Bears Football. That's FB for football. So UNC Bears FB. Or you can go to their Facebook page and like them there, facebook.com backslash Northern Colorado football. First game this season is going to get to us quick. I always pick on Troy because I count down the days and he tells me to stop. I think we're a little over 200 days out. I bet you Grable can tell you exactly. How many days you got, Grable? 205. 205, yep, a little over 200. <laughs> Troy tells me I have to stop doing that because he doesn't like when I do that. We're still in basketball season, and he's on the road for that. Um, but uh, that game on the sep- September 2nd, we'll start out. We'll have the McNeese State University Cowboys in here yeah. for what has turned into a home-and-home home series mm-hmm. with them. A couple years, we'll go out there to McNeese State and face them. Uh, you can get tickets for the games, all games, by going to uncbears.com backslash tickets, or you can call 351-4849. Again, thanks for joining us for the National Signing Day, and go Bears.